Okay, Swimming Pool Steve here with another pump installation. Just wanted to uh, go over some of the deficiencies. This is actually a very high-end pool. Um, it's got, you know, some nice equipment here, a nice big cartridge filter, got a salt water system, but let's look at the deficiencies because this is what I see whenever I'm working on pools like this. The first thing that I see is flexible PVC clamped in place. Flexible PVC is made for glue and primer applications. Actually, it's technically rated as hose and not pipe. Um, and it shouldn't be used with a um, barbed fitting and clamp. This is for use with poly-style pipe. Does it work? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Um, is it likely to hold, you know, 30 or 50 PSI if I were to pressure test this system? Probably not. Um, it's okay, but technically a deficiency nonetheless. Um, let's see here. The elbows that were used... That's a street elbow. That should be a sweep elbow. A street elbow, the water comes up and basically hits a brick wall, and then the, there's a, a vortices, and then the water turns and goes this way. A sweep elbow is just that. It's shaped a little different such that the water turns, and it helps quite a bit with the flow dynamics. Uh, street elbows, like you see here, should not be used for mechanical installations like this. See it all the time, and there's absolutely no reason for it. Uh, so we go into the cartridge filter, back out. Got a uh, nice rate pack heater here. Let's talk about some of these deficiencies. Okay, first things first. We've got another street elbow here coming directly out of the heater, which means as the water comes out, it more or less hits a brick wall and then has to turn 90 degrees. Uh, again, we're dealing with clamped fittings. In the area that I work in, which is southern Ontario, there is no bylaw for the type of pipe that's used for, for coming in and going out of the heaters. As you can see here, this is just the inch and a half uh, spa flex pipe. I prefer to see something called CPVC, which is a special heat rated PVC pipe, three feet in and three feet out of the heater, and that prevents any melting of the pipes, which can happen fairly commonly. Um, but technically speaking, that's that's not a deficiency in this area, that's just a preference. If this were my pool, which is how I prefer to answer questions, I would definitely have CPVC going in and out of this heater, three feet. Okay, here's the biggest deficiency in this room. Here we have a Hayward T-Cell 15 salt water system. Control box is up here, and then we have the, uh, the salt cell. So here's the problem. There is no check valve in between that salt cell and this heater, which means the concentrated chlorine that this cell is making are going, is going to track back up through that line and into this heater and cut the life of this heater in half. Now, if you were to ask a pool guy, he might say, oh, well, this line is facing downwards, it's sloped down, so I don't need a check valve here because the chlorine can't come backwards because it's sloped down. It's completely inaccurate. The water can easily travel backwards through the system. It can and will. If I had the time to open up this heater here, I could show you that the header is probably rotten on the outlet side and not corroded on the inlet, and that would be as a result of the chlorine tracking backwards through the system. There should absolutely be a check valve in between your salt cell and your heater to prevent any chlorinated water from traveling back into your heater. Your heater is the most expensive component in the room. I would suppose that you would want to get the longest life out of it as possible. And that's pretty much it for the deficiencies in this room. I mean, it's this is actually better than most, but this is just an illustration of all the little things that you can do to try to make your installation as good as possible.